What is the significance of this kind of development? And uh, we've had a lot of messaging from the Chinese government uh, that, that does certainly point to its unhappiness with higher commodity prices. Yeah, indeed, Anna. It does seem like now they're starting to put some concrete steps around that recent rhetoric. There's a dual prong to this, like you mentioned. On the one hand, state-owned enterprises are going to have to restrict their exposure to overseas positions, and they're going to have to report their futures positions to the authorities too. And on the other side of this, the government will release um, reserves, essentially, of metals such as alum aluminium and copper and zinc, and those reserves will be sold on to the market to manufacturers directly. And of course, all of this is about trying to keep a lid on soaring factory and producer prices in China, which we know uh, are at our highest now since 2008. Factories have been crying out for months that they're getting swamped on all sides by supply side issues from a shortage of containers to the price of these commodities. And the big concern, of course, is not only will it impact their profits, but it will eventually flow through to consumer prices in China and possibly even uh, flow through to consumer prices overseas. Now, we haven't seen that link yet. The producers are mostly soaking up these costs. But nonetheless, this is the, f this is the first time we've had a pretty firm step by the government now to, to intervene in the market and try and take at least some of that pressure uh, some of that supply pressure off the factories. Good afternoon, and uh, we have a slew of China data due in about 13 minutes' time. What are economists expecting from that, and what should we be watching out for? Well, we do indeed, Mark. We get a, get a pretty decent health check on where things are going. We're going to get industrial, industrial production, fixed asset investment, and retail sales. The broad story is expected to be one of an ongoing recovery, pretty robust in, in China. Uh, uh, on the fixed asset investment side, government borrowing to spend on infrastructure is expected to give that a lift. Industrial production is expected to have been up around 10 percent, and that's mostly reflecting the manufacturing story in China, which remains pretty robust. But the big one to watch is going to be retail sales marked. There was a holiday in May that will probably have boosted the overall number, but the bigger picture is is there going to be a shift in spending from goods? Chinese consumers have been spending on goods, but are they going to be buying more on services? And this goes to the global theme of what kind of a consumer will eventually emerge out of the crisis. Remember, in China, the virus has been under control now for well over a year, uh, relatively speaking. Uh, the economy has been going well. And so a lot of people are looking towards China's consumers to see what kind of lessons you might get there for the global consumer recovery once, uh, once the pandemic is under control everywhere. So I think the key out of today's numbers will be retail sales. The headline takeaway is expected to be one of an ongoing robust recovery, but zero in on what consumers are doing to get a sense as to how durable this V-shaped rebound in China will prove to be.